War production in the United States during World War II was nothing short of miraculous. The United States at the time was just coming out of the Depression. This rubbed out many of the country's machine and tool industries, and the military was woefully undersupplied. It took more than 6,000 people to provide food, equipment, medical services, and transportation to American soldiers. In addition, many raw materials such as rubber, manila fiber, and oil were in short supply. President Franklin Roosevelt told Congress and his countrymen less than a month after Pearl Harbor, powerful enemies must be outfought and outproduced. It is not enough to turn out just a few more planes, a few more tanks, a few more guns, a few more ships than could be turned out by our enemies, he said. We must outproduce them overwhelmingly so that there can be no question of our ability to provide a crushing superiority of equipment in any theater of the World War. He then called for the production of 50,000 planes in a year. It was thought to be ridiculous. Nevertheless, Americans rose to the occasion, and by 1944, the country was producing 96,000 a year. In addition to this total of 90,000 tanks, 55,000 anti-aircraft guns, 2 million submachine guns, and 200 submarines were produced by the end of 1945. For all this production of weapons and artillery, a lot of resources were necessary. Unfortunately, metals were scarce at the time, so plastics were developed to take their place. Copper was taken out of pennies and replaced with steel, and nickel was removed from nickels. War production in the U.S. during World War II even affected fashion. To save material, men's suits lost their pant cuffs and vests, and women painted their legs to take the place of nylons. U.S. war production at this scale proved to be a huge economic inconvenience, as the federal government spent about $350 billion during World War II, or twice as much as it had spent in total for the entire history of the U.S. government up to that point. To raise money for defense, the government relied on a number of techniques, calling on the American people to ration certain commodities, such as gasoline, tires, coffee, sugar, canned goods, butter, and shoes. They also generated more tax revenue by lowering the personal exemption and selling government war bonds to individuals and financial institutions. All of these methods served to provide the government with revenue and at the same time keep inflation under control. War production profoundly changed the American industry. Companies already engaged in defense work expanded. Others like the automobile industry were transformed completely. In 1941, more than 3 million cars were manufactured in the United States. Only 139 more were made during the entire war. Instead, Chrysler made fuselages. General Motors made airplane engines, guns, trucks, and tanks. America launched more vessels in 1941 than Japan did the entire war. While 16 million men and women marched to the war, 24 million more were moved in search of defense jobs, often for more pay than they previously had ever earned. 8 million women stepped into the workforce, and ethnic groups such as African Americans and Latinos found job opportunities as never before. By the end of the war, more than half of all industrial production in the world would take place in the United States. At the end of the day, war production at this large scale was a necessary step that the United States had to take to enter World War II, and it ultimately ended up saving the United States economy.